Welcome! In this video, we're going to explore the subject of comparator hysteresis. I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. Please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. The object here is on comparators, we can produce a stable output by using feedback from the output to one of the two inputs, be it the plus or minus input. This is in order to achieve a different turn on voltage than turn off voltage, which we will explain the reason for momentarily. What is hysteresis? Okay, we can have a, a sensor connected to a comparator, set, such as a photocell resistor network. That's, for instance, measuring um, sunlight and how it changes during the day, which is a slow change. And the comparator, of course, might want to trip on some device after the intensity reaches a predetermined level. But this slow moving signal can sometimes create problems. If it's really close to the switch on point, it can feed back and cause oscillations. Also, you're dealing with low amplitude signals on a high impedance that can create noise, which again can cause feedback. And instead of tripping on a relay, for example, a clean trip on, it might sit there and chatter or flutter or so forth. So the principle of hysteresis consists of two different input threshold voltages depending on the actual output state. In other words, I would want the trip on, for example, to be at one voltage, but the turn off when it goes down to be at another voltage. That eliminates this problem. All right, this demonstration is of an LM311 comparator without hysteresis. Here's your LM311. This is uh, a control, uh, potentiometer that controls VN to the minus input. To the plus input, we just simply have a um, two 10K resistors as a voltage divider that provides six volts. The meter here is connected to V voltage in. Like I said, while V ref is six volts, notice the LED here when we hit six volts. Okay, came right on at 6 volts, or somewhere around it. Here it's barely on. It's sort of fluttering a little bit. This is a problem that you suffer without hysteresis. You see that it blinks on and off and is real sensitive right around that voltage. If you have something like a really slow moving signal such as from a photocell resistor combination that's uh, measuring your intensity of the sun that could create some problems if you're trying to trip a relay or turn on a motor or etc. Let's see how it does now when we connect the feedback resistor, which is a 47K, that you will see in the following slides. Now we have the 47K feedback resistor connected, and we're going to use hysteresis to give us a much more stable output. Watch the LED in the voltmeter as I turn up the voltage on VN. It won't cut on at around 661 this time. It'll cut on a little higher. 6.4, 6.5. Let's do that again. 64, 65, 67. 
about six seven but notice it won't cut off cut off now at um, 6.0 or 6.1 it's going to have to drop to a lower value again let's take a look at that 6.7 to turn on about 5.8, five, 5.7 five, to turn off that's our history hysteresis in action and and there's no way that you're going to have the oscillation or other problems once it trips on at around 6.7 or 6.6 it won't trip off again until it drops to about 5.8 or 5.7 somewhere through there so that's a demonstration of hysteresis or the idea that you would use in a Smith trigger let's take a look at the actual circuitry and discuss in circuit detail what we just saw here is an example of using an LM339 comparator as a Smith trigger a Smith trigger is a uh, device that will um, clean up often noisy or erratic digital signals they're used in all kinds of electronics uh, particularly where you're having noisy sensors or no line noise and so forth unlike the video that you will that you should have seen uh, I don't have the LED uh, part of the circuit in this schematic I also do not have the pot that's connected to v voltage in or pin 6 on the minus input. And while the video showed an LM311, for our purposes the LM39 works the same way. Let's take a closer look at what we're doing with the, and it all works through these four resistors. Here is the circuit redrawn without the comparator. Note that with the LM339 and the LM311 that these are open collector outputs. So when the open collector transistor, that is the comparator, is turned off, you have a condition here where test point 3 is you're going to have a 3K pull-up resistor in series with a 47k feedback resistor but if you note that combination is in parallel with one of the 10k voltage divider resistors and the complete series parallel combination is in series with the other 10k voltage divider resistor let's redraw R1 and R4 as a 10k resistor I mean, excuse me, 50K resistor in parallel with a 10K. And through Ohm's law, this gives us an equivalent resistance of 8.3K. The combination of R1, R2, and R4 gives us an equivalent resistance of 8.3K. The R3 is still 10K, so we have a total resistance as seen by the 12 volt VCC of 18.3 K current total IT or current total 12 volts divided by 18.3 K equals 6.56 milliamps 6.56 milliamps times 10 K that is R3 is going to give us 6.56 volts on V reference if I had not, again, if I had not had the 47K feedback resistor, this voltage would have been 6 volts. In this slide, we have a different um, resistor combination due to the comparator being switched on. Because the output of the comparator, which would have been at test point 3, has now switched to ground and this has produced a situation where R1 now is in parallel with R3 the lower 10k resistor and of course this parallel combination is in series with R2 the upper 
10K voltage divider resistor. Using Ohm's law, R1 uh, and 3 has an equivalent resistance of 8,245 ohms. In combination with the 10K, our R total is 18,245. Divide that into 12 volts, IT equals 12 divided by 18,425, and I total is 6.51 milliamps. 6.51 milliamps times 8,245 is going to give me 5.36 volts on V reference. That is test point one. So what we have here is not only hysteresis on a comparator circuit, but it's also known as a uh, Schmidt trigger, is that it will turn on at 6.56 volts or so. Then before you come down and it turns off, it's going to be around 5.4 volts. Note that your calculated values are going to vary somewhat from your real measured values um, because of tolerances and the resistors, the comparator itself, and so forth. That is normal. If it's within 5 or 10 percent, uh, no worry. If you want to sit here and measure each little resistor you use and use the exact resistance, of course it will come out closer. But note, when you calculate things like these resistances that we're doing here, there's going to be some variation. It won't be perfect. And that's something that engineers often have to deal with. Sometimes engineers can calculate the stuff up fine, but then you might need a technician or somebody else to figure out how to get it to work in the real world. That completes this brief introduction to comparator hysteresis. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and got some use out of it. Um, please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Um, also, send me any suggestions, make sure I got the words pronounced right, and so forth. Believe me, I value feedback from my viewers, and thank you for the privilege of allowing me to present this to you. Have a great day.